Hey, Andre, you know what I love? What? I love watching crash test videos. You know why? Why? That sounds awful. No, it isn't because, get this, they're testing the vehicles and they're crashing them to make them safer. Yes, well, IIHS, Insurance Institute for Highway Safety, has been doing it for decades. And we have the data to show you. Yeah, it's incredibly satisfying watching a car get crashed with nobody getting hurt, knowing that it's making the vehicle safer. And in this video, Andre, we're going to give you the most safe and the least safe brand new electric cars because we've had a whole crop of new electric cars come out this year. And we're going to talk about just how well they did on their crash test rating. As always, we're going to start with the safest and then go down the list to the ones that aren't so safe. So let's start with uh, some of the safest. Go for it. Yes. Yeah, so first of all, IHS has been doing this for years and years and years. They do several tests and it includes crash testing. It includes headlight testing, uh, even child safety seat testing. I mean, they're very, very thorough. What does IIHS stand for? Insurance Institute of for Highway Safety. It's basically um, an independent organization, but it's based on insurance companies, right? Because yeah. they need to know exactly how safe these cars are. Uh, because it relates to uh, maintenance, repairability, and also insurance. You know, when I was in graduate school in what? D.C., I actually did a story on them, and this was like 1895. They've been okay. around that long. You're dating yourself. <laughs> anyway, uh, they did crash test the latest crop of electric cars. Uh, and, uh, you know, it's not just about how well the crash test uh you know, challenges the car. It's also how well the car does on like the headlight test. You know, there's just a lot of tests. And to get that top safety pick plus rating, you not only have to do well on very difficult tests, right? The that overlap test is really hard. You mm -hmm. also have to do well with headlights. Just, you know, a lot of criteria. They keep raising the bar. So let's start with the first car. Yeah, the first car I want to talk about is the Tesla Model 3. Um, everybody knows, you know, Tesla has several cars in their lineup, but this latest one was recently tested. Um, this is the Model 3, so we have the data for that, and it earns Top Safety Pick Plus, which is their highest rating that you can receive from IIHS. And like you said, so if we look at the data, and we can show you crash footage as well, um, it gets green lights, so good ratings for all of the crash tests, including the small overlap, moderate overlap, roof strength, you know how they squeeze the car from the top? and actually measure how much uh, pressure the roof can withstand. And that basically tells you, um, in case of a rollover, how it performs. Um, and also, you know, crash prevention is big. You know, aut autonomous systems and um, actually adaptive cruise control systems. And so those also get good ratings. Yeah, you know, I think a lot of people uh, have been uh, afraid of electric cars because, of course, there's so much potential energy in the battery, right? So you're afraid that the thing is going to start on fire, uh, and then you won't be able to put it out with, like, water, which you won't be able to. Correct. Um, does IIHS test for that? It seems like they must. Well, so here's, here's an interesting thing. They've crash tested several cars, including Teslas, Volvo, which we're going to talk about, yep. Audi, um, Ford, etc., etc., etc. As far as we understand from these tests, none of these cars caught fire. Okay, that's great. So, so none of these cars caused fire in these tests. Are there fires in the real world? Yes. So, but I'm not a firefighter, so I can't can't quite tell you exactly yeah, I mean, how that works. I mean, if you look at an electric car, you'll see that there are these bright orange cables, which clearly identify the high voltage cables yes. that are running through the car. They're uh, quick disconnect uh, clamps on them. So, if you need to disconnect the battery from the rest of the cars. Uh, electrical harness you can do so i think that there's a lot of thought that goes into making sure that the battery um you know is and stays in its pretty strong little you know box mm -hmm. uh, and that you can disconnect it from the rest of the car so that firefighters can use like things like jaws of life without electrocuting the occupants or themselves, or themselves yeah. yeah all right so um, tesla has been known for good and excellent um, safety and so the model 3 did really well let's keep going so that's a plus good for you tesla what's uh, next safety pick plus so next car they tested recently this yeah. was just a couple days ago okay um, that they released this information the volvo xc40 recharge this is basically an all-electric small crossover. Yeah, now we haven't driven the Recharge. We have, of course, owned a Model 3. Uh, the Recharge is based on the Polestar 2. Uh, I think they're actually built in the same factory, I believe in Belgium. Uh, and uh, it's a small crossover. Um, the Polestar is more of kind of a hatchbacky kind of thing, yeah. fastbacky kind of thing. Uh, and uh, you would expect Volvo to do very well. Uh, Volvo has always been known for, uh, you know, being innovative 
and being one of the more uh, safety conscious companies. They invented the seatbelt, Andre, and then they gave the patent away to everybody. Yes, they did. And I owned a Volvo in my past, so yeah, I know about Volvos too. Uh, they got good ratings across the board in all the crash tests, even the roof strength test. They got safety pick plus, which is the highest rating. Once again, um, important things, uh, crash prevention system, um, uh, including pedestrian detection. So they do all kinds of testing, including little dummies walking around, right? And actually the car well, recognizing it. Hold on. Not little kids that are dummies. These are... No, actually robotic dummies. <laughs> no no little dummies. And I've had, we both have kids. We're put in harm's way in the making of this crash test. Right, exactly. And they measure... Oh, my gosh. You know, they show how they hook up some of the computers. Yeah. I mean, they have a lot of sensors on these cars. Who cares? I want to see it crash into a wall on the offset... <laughs> <laughs> crash test where things go flying off of it. You know one of the things they have to do? Like what? In that offset crash test yeah. where, you know, like it's very difficult because you're only exposing a part of the car and so you totally. so you have a hard time dispensing or dispersing of that energy. The wheel can't go flying. It has to stay actually attached to the chassis because that would be very dangerous, right? If like the, the front wheel went flying and killed a pedestrian. Yeah, or go down the highway. And yeah. in some cases, the wheels do come off um, in some of these that would tests. That would be a fail. Um, and in some cases, they fold inside. You yeah. know, it's, That's okay. It's really spectacular. You just don't want to r- rolling down the highway. Uh, no, no, no. And you know what? Some vehicles, actually, there was one vehicle that actually tipped over during a test. It, oh, it yeah, was that a was Jeep a Jeep. Wrangler. Yeah, I remember that. That was um, quite the thing. So, you know, IHS publishes everything. They didn't hold back information, right? They publish the results as they are, so uh, I think that's really good. All right, what's next on our list? Once uh, again, we're still at the top, most safe, the plus rating. Yeah, so the next plus rating, safety pick, safety pick plus, is the e-tron. So there's two cars they tested. There was the Audi e-tron SUV and also the Sportback, which is kind of a sleek one. Yeah, there's a GT coming, which is a version of the Taycan, uh, which I don't believe we're talking about. We're talking about the SUV. Um, You know, that's a fun vehicle. I've driven that vehicle. Uh, It's a big old uh, crossover. Uh, They've been around now for two years, I believe, maybe three years. Uh, I was actually looking at some used ones, seeing what kind of, you know, how they're doing price-wise, because they're pretty expensive, but on the used market, they're starting to become more affordable. Yeah, so uh, this is interesting. So the headlights... Um, some of the trim options got an acceptable rating. Oh. Um, and I thought that, that precludes you from getting the plus. But I think what's happening here, uh, the car they tested was a 2019 yeah. model. So maybe, you know, they're making it harder and harder every year. So maybe it's just squeaked by. Uh, but also, all the crash tests were great. Um, and if you look at the roof strength test, which is really important because... Uh, you know, these cars are heavy. Yeah, right? for sure. So when they turn over, if they turn over, potentially... Hundreds uh, of pounds of battery weight. Uh, yeah, or you, thousands. You know what's the only cases. car that actually, like, rolled over and then rolled over back on its uh, wheels again? What? The Model X. <laughs> that video is pretty cool. Like, they yeah. try to roll it over, and it's like one of those... Uh, you know, well, when I was a kid, weebles, but basically because there's so much weight down low, it, it just, rolls over on its roof and then it comes right back and yeah. lands on its wheels. It's pretty cool. Because the batteries are in the floor, yeah. basically. Yeah. Right? And then the weight, the, the shape of it also encourages that. So it's yeah, pretty cool. Yeah, so roof strength is really important. And these cars so far have good ratings. All right, what's next? Let's get to the ones that aren't so good. So Mustang Mach-E. Ooh, it's brand a brand new. new car. Yeah, we just had it. We just reviewed it. Yeah, just reviewed it. Uh, it just misses the plus. Uh-oh, uh-oh. First so now, one that didn't get the top safety pick plus. What what, what did it do that but didn't it, match? But it, get, but it gets safety pick. Yeah. So it gets safety pick. So And once again, they put it through the whole gamut of testing. Uh, side crash, front crash, uh, head restraint crash. Um, so the headlights were marginal. Oh. So, so here's the thing. Uh, the high-end uh, model had a good rating for the headlights. Right. This is the premium and the GT in the first edition. But then when you have the um, more of the base trim, uh, the California yeah. uh, Route 1, uh, that got moderate because it had different headlights. Yeah, you know, Andre, I, I got to tell you, uh, whenever companies do a little bit of cost cutting on things like, you know, safety equipment, and right now, of course, all the Asian companies are doing a complete suite of, like, autonomous braking, uh, uh, blind spot monitoring, lane key. Actually, blind spot monitoring isn't one of them. They really? make you pay extra for that, yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's like it's like autonomous braking, backup, uh, de- uh, 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 pedestrian detection. Um, that suite of things comes free. And but then on some of the safety stuff, like the headlights, which is crazy because you know a lot of us drive at night, <laughs> right, <laughs> on dark roads, yes. or like even blind spot monitoring. Uh, they make you pay for that. Uh, and so I'm always kind of a little um, uh, shocked when I see like. 
the upper trim models get the good headlights, but the lower trim models get kind of the, the inexpensive headlights. That happens a lot with trucks, right? Yeah, oh, for sure. At, yeah, if you look at the basic truck, yeah. it just has regular you know, halogen bulbs. And then if you look at the high-end truck, you know, they have LEDs that swivel, right, and do all kinds of crazy stuff. You don't need to swivel. Well, maybe you do need to swivel because oh. <laughs> the way they test that, they actually, yeah. they actually drive the thing at night and around a corner, and then they look at what degrees of illumination it provides. Yeah, yeah. They, they track all the light uh, yeah. patterns. Yeah. Yeah. So, so that still a really safe car. Uh, but just missed it by, by a hair. All right, all right. So now we're kind of going down into the less safe vehicles, but still good. Okay. Yeah. Well, what's next? Uh, so the Chevy Bolt, this is the previous generation, 2021. Right. So, so the 2022s nothing. are haven't been tested. Okay. So they, they just redesigned it, but basically uh, the redesign is very similar in terms of its powertrain to the current one. Yes, but they haven't been tested. Uh, right. the, the latest version right. wasn't. And it's pretty small, which is always a little worrying. Yeah. So it did well, but did not get a safety pick. Not, not or, or the plus, plus, not a safety pick? Not no, a, no, no. Uh -oh. uh, and it has to do with a small overlap front. Yeah, crash that's a tough test. test, dude. It's a very, very tough test, but it basically simulates, you know, maybe on the highway where you just kind of tip or hit somebody yeah. just on the corner. Or right? crash barrier, you just hit the front quarter of the vehicle. Yes. Yeah. So it just didn't do so well on that test. Uh, it is a very small car, and it's a slightly older design, but it's still very popular. Yeah, and you can also tell, like, uh, I know it shouldn't be this way, but it seems to be this way. Like, the more money you spend, the more safe the car is, right? Because we're talking about, like, the Audis are very expensive, the Tesla's very expensive, uh, and now we're getting into a little bit more affordable electric cars, and all of a sudden we're missing some of the safety. And partially due to the size, I believe. The also. size is also, but yeah, yeah well. Yeah. And, and, and cost, of course. Uh, There's not a correlation, but, but yeah. So another very popular car, yeah. so if we keep going, is the Nis Nissan Leaf. Uh, okay. And they don't have actually a full gamut on this car. So they ran several tests, but not everything. What, what year? Uh, this is a 2021. Okay. This is the latest uh, Nissan Leaf. Uh, of course, the previous generation Leaf was also tested, and there is also data about that car, but it's very popular. It got good ratings, but it, um, it missed a couple of items, and it also did not get the safety pick plus. Okay, so what items did it miss? Can you see? Um, let me just check. Well, so go. once again, child seat Thank anchors uh, uh, did not get top marks, yeah. and, and of course that's important for families, right? Oh heck yeah! Um, and uh, but other uh, crash res uh, tests were good. All right. Well, so uh, you know it's a very comprehensive test, so you got to nail all those different criteria. Yeah, you have to check all the boxes. <laughs> all right, let's keep going. Uh, and finally, this one is dear to my heart. Oh, the BMW i3. You just bought our old one that we had for a while. Yeah. So my wife is currently using it to commute. The i3 is actually working pretty well. Um, she has about 50 miles a day that she has to drive oh, from home to work a, and it's back. It's got about 60 miles of range. About 70. So okay. it's just it's it's actually perfect. Can for, she charge up at work? No, her oh. her parking lot is really huge and there's no chargers. Okay. So, uh, but she charges it at home and it's fine. Um, it got good ratings, but it missed the top safety pick. Why did it miss it? Uh, head restraints. So what they do this test where they simulate a rear crash. Okay. So as if somebody backed into you, you know, when you're just sitting there, and um, they test the um, the headrest uh, restraints and it was not. The best score for that. So I've I've had a thought about this. You know, electric cars and autonomy kind of go together well, right? Uh, and I just came back from the airport and I was driving uh, a new Mercedes uh, Coupe, mm -hmm. uh, and I was using you know the I was on the highway, so I was using the lane keep and the steering assist. Uh, you know, which is not even level two autonomy. There's five levels, so level five would be the car can drive itself in any kind of conditions, no rain. Uh, without any human input whatsoever mm -hmm. or without any human being there to actually take control of it. So we're far from full autonomy. Uh, uh, but I, I was thinking to myself, you know, we drive a lot of cars, and so we kind of do, uh, you know, seat of the pant uh, autonomous uh, testing. Mm -hmm. But it would be good if these guys actually got into the business of testing the different kinds of autonomous systems that are now coming and becoming much more prevalent uh, and actually doing, you know, a much more scientific test beyond kind of the seat of the pan test. And we don't have the budget or the expertise to do that, but it would be good to actually set up a real test of autonomy and see how the vehicle does uh, and, you know, give it a rating like they do, not just based on safety, but also on the safety of the autonomous systems within the car. So they started doing this, okay. right? So what they do so far is 
uh, the front crash prevention. Right. So a lot of cars, you know, if they notice an obstacle in front of you at yeah. lower speeds. Uh, so, for example, they test at 12 miles per hour um, and 25 miles per hour. So that's, that's low-hanging fruit. It's pretty easy to test that, right? Yeah, and you, you, you put you, an obstacle in front yeah, of the you're, car. Yeah, you're like, you drive the car 12 miles an hour, and then you get some kind of cardboard thing that, that runs in front of it, shaped like a pedestrian... You well, know. they have a little r- robotic. They get a walker, a real walker, a little wow. walking thing. Well, good job. Just a walking. IHS, thing. I'm impressed. <laughs> but but I think they could do probably more, right? Well, uh, yeah. Lane, it, lane keep is another. System. I mean, what I want is something on the highway, right, where they have a closed course, and you actually test to see how well the car. Like for some reason, the Mercedes today. I'm you know I'm, I'm on uh, the highway and. Uh, uh, I'm in the slow lane, and there's cars in the right, so I want to pass them, a truck going slower. I have it set to 75 miles an hour. Uh, and this has happened to me in the Tesla, actually, to a much more uh, terrifying degree. Uh, and pull over, nothing in front of me, just that, you know, truck on the right, and the car just decides to brake. Yeah, just because it determined there is some sort of condition, but... Yeah, but I, there was nothing in front of me. Yeah. So, you know, and so now immediately a very safe pass is becoming very dangerous because if there's a car behind me, uh, the car is braking for no reason. And my, uh, our old Tesla used to do that, too. If, if you came back from Denver, there was an overpass that threw a shadow, and it was kind of under a, it was yeah. like a little gully. And the second you hit that shadow, the car would go into, like, emergency braking. Uh, and once a Subaru almost ran up, you know, the back of the Tesla because of that, if I hadn't been paying attention, uh, you know, and that's why it's not autonomous. But still, you know, you expect... In fact, like if you're driving and uh, you're in autonomous mode, let's say you're using one of the autonomous systems and you've got your hand on the wheel, then you're kind of scanning the horizon expecting like a deer or a car or something, right? But you're not expecting the thing to go into emergency braking all of a sudden. It's the weirdest thing. Yeah, and, and also, like you said, the autonomous system needs to be as good as a human or better. And it, it should be. be. It cannot be worse. It, it should be yeah. as good as a human. I mean, yeah. we're not very good, right? We're... We're animals. <laughs> we're animals, depending depending on the kind of day you're having, the kind of lunch you had, yeah. <laughs> and the kind of glasses you're wearing. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but you, but you don't expect the thing to go into like you know immediate autonomous braking. And then sometimes on those autonomous braking systems, uh, I was in the TRX coming to the office, you know, uh, and a car probably I'd say uh, maybe 40 feet in front of me, 30 feet uh, decided to to like like stop mm-hmm. right. Uh, I think the light turned, so I I, I I slowly put on the brake, and then the truck like went into immediate like you know, and it's emergency scared. stop. Yeah, yeah, and that's a lot of weight. That the tires screech. You know, I went flying yeah. forward. I'm like, I, I got this, dude. <laughs> There's no need to you know to go full lock. You know what else happens to me? I have a steep driveway. Yeah. Sometimes uh, there's some vehicles I back up. And they determine that, you know, the steep driveway, the, the bottom of the uh, driveway is actually an obstacle. Yeah. But it's not. It's just an angle of the driveway. And sometimes it goes in the emergency braking, just pulling down my driveway. And then, you know, the, the scariest thing that also happens a lot now, and I get this, uh, and I know Consumer Reports test this and they give cars high marks when they have this, but it, it's also, you know, it, it's safe until it happens to you. So a couple of years ago, there was a Jeep, I think it was, it was a Grand Cherokee, uh, that uh, when you open the door... You could actually put it in reverse, and uh, an actor in st- I think it was a guy who played Chekhov, perhaps. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he on got Star, he, on Star Trek. On, on Star Trek, he got run over. And now what they've done to counteract that is, uh, if you open the door of a car and you're backing and, up, it slams on the brakes. And also, so my Ford F one fifty has this. Yes. So, but it only works if there is no seat belt. So, so it's almost like, um, like let's say you're trying to get out of the car. Well, so let your me seat gi- belt is off. Let me give you a situation yeah. where it was, you know, not good, uh, and it almost slammed me into the front of the car. So, uh, I think we had uh, a Hyundai that did this, uh, and we have this big curb, you know, next. There's no, you know, we're in the parking lot here. There's nobody around me. There's this big curb, and I'm trying not to curb the rear wheels. And it has a camera, but I don't trust it because, you know, let's face it, manufacturers, stop putting potato cams in your vehicles. I'm really tired of it. You can especially tell at night. If you guys want to see how good your camera is, don't do it in the middle of the day. Do it at night. And if it starts to pixelate, you know, we do a lot of video yeah. and it gets grainy. You know, you're not, looking at, you're not looking at 4K, 2K, half K. You're looking at, like, no K. <laughs> Zero K. Yeah, it's, it's that bad, right? Yeah. So you, you, and what happens is the colors wash out, the video pixelates, and your depth of field goes away. So the, the three things you need in a camera are immediately gone. Not all of them. Like the Defender, that camera, that's another cool thing, by the way. Uh, a real safety item I found out, and I'll, I'll finish my story. So I'm driving up um, in the snowstorm, which 
apparently will never end Andre in Colorado. No, it's, another, it's supposed to snow today. We have another one coming today. I'm driving up in a snowstorm, uh, and uh, there's, uh, you know, uh, the windshield is just covered in goop in the back. And I realized that I have this camera that's facing backwards, so I switched to the camera. Beautiful. In the mirror. In the mirror. That yeah. camera that's, you know, on the back of that little fin on the Defender that gives you, that goes in the rear view camera. Crystal clear, uh, no problem with, like, dirt or mud, you know, that's caking on the back window as I'm going over Loveland Pass. Uh, really great safety measure. Plus, there's a tire there, so it's hard to see over that tire. Mm -hmm. uh, and if you get used to that weird depth of field, it's really safe. But anyway, so, so I'm backing up this Hyundai, right, next to the curb because I don't want to curb it. I've got my seatbelt off because I'm going to lean out of the car so I can look at the back wheel. Guess what it does? It's like it the slams door. on the brake. Slams on the brake, and I go flying forward because I'm backing up. It was trying to save you. Yeah, from it was trying trying to save me from not curbing the wheel. <laughs> so you know, there's this there's this fine line between these systems, like uh, overthinking what you're trying to do. Yeah. Uh, and so I'm always a big fan of being able to turn this stuff off. Or at least if you can't tr turn it off, it needs to understand what you're doing. Or, yeah, at or, or at least there has to be some yeah. more logic than you know, if you open the door and you're in reverse and your seatbelt's off, just slam on the brakes. And it will slam on the brakes. It won't like. There's no warning. It just slams oh, on the bang. brakes. Yeah. yeah. Full so lock. By, so, by the way, you might be wondering, what about the ID4 Volkswagen? Yeah, what about it? Uh, some others. Not tested yet. Not tested yet. Yeah, there's a whole slew of new electric vehicles coming uh, very soon, obviously. I think there's going to be, I think I counted, it's going to be like 14 by the end of the so year. So, the new Ionic wasn't tested yet? Yeah. So, there's several cars that are not available yet. Yeah, so as soon as we get those, we'll let you know. Uh, but right now, uh, in general, the electric cars are doing really well, uh, as long as they have good headlights. There you go. All right. Thanks for watching. Remember, check out tflcar.com for more news views and real-world independent and honest reviews. That's going to be a mouthful. See you guys next time. <laughs> Ciao.